Hi, this is Lauren Serpin with Hemp Traders, and today we are going to be doing a presentation on how to get into the hemp industry and the questions you should be asking. So, you want to get into the hemp industry. That's a question I hear quite a bit from a lot of different people who are very excited to try to get into this billion dollar industry as it's getting off the ground. But of course, if you do want to get into it, there are a lot of questions that you should be asking. Uh, this presentation is meant to uh, encourage people to ask these questions before they get into the hemp industry, and it should make your uh, transition or starting a company uh, a lot easier. Or at least it will avoid a lot of the mistakes. So, uh, first question that you want to ask, really, you got to look at it from a broad overview, and that is what sector of the hemp industry do you belong? You know, are you really interested in the flower, when, you know, mostly CBD, medical, smokable, edible, medicine, recreation, supplement, things like that? Perhaps you're more into the seed or grain, and that would be uh, using it as a food. Hemp hearts, hemp protein powder, hemp seed oil, possibly as a feed for animals in the future. And then, of course, the last one would be the fiber industry, and that would be all the different fiber products, such as the textiles, twine, yarn, rope, webbing, building materials, composites, and things like that. So you kind of want to figure out, you know, what area really interests you of it. Uh, I'm now going to talk a little bit more of an overview of each sector to give you an idea of where it's at right now. All right, so the hemp flower sector, that's really uh, the CBD industry. Uh, you have things, you know, well-known companies or Charlotte's Web. You can see that it's planted in a way where the flowers, or I should say the plants, are a few feet apart, giving a lot of space. And it also involves things like um, extraction, uh, distillation, and creating different food and products that people would use. So what's kind of happening in the flower sector uh, right now, and that's CBD and other cannabinoids. And overall, it's a little easier to enter this market, uh, mainly because you don't need a lot of acreage uh, to do it. You can probably get into the industry with just five to ten acres, would grow enough flour for you to start having a company. Uh, one of the difficult things about it is there is a lot more regulation involved with this, uh, regulated both on the federal level and uh, states have their own regulation, as well as possible certain counties and cities, and it's kind of a bit of a maze to go through everything. Uh, products are not necessarily legal in all areas. Maybe you can grow it, produce it, but you might not be able to sell it everywhere. Uh, there's also some confusion with marijuana uh, in this industry, and it can sometimes cause confusion and uh, legal issues. Uh, there is a sizable demand. Uh, it's a product that a lot of people can use. There's a lot of market out there for it, once in for medicine or as a supplement, and taking it in all the different forms. Uh, and there's also many niche markets with uh, nutraceuticals and supplements and possible use for other cannabinoids that uh, may not be um, cause like a marijuana effect, but would be purely medicinal that haven't yet been uh, discovered or in use. Uh, when we look at the market overall in the cannabinoid sector, or I should say the hemp CBD sector, uh, we're seeing falling prices uh, dramatically right and left, uh, even to the point where some people, farmers who have produced it, are not able to sell it and make a profit, or they might have to sell it at a loss. And there seems to be uh, no end in this with a lot of farmers, a lot of people uh, stockpiling on inventory as we speak. So uh, very a lot of competition out there, and uh, it would be, in that sense, it would be difficult. But the fact that there's so many companies out there right now shows that it is a market and it's even an expanding market. All right, next sector is the hemp grain sector. All right, you can see you're going to grow the plants a little bit closer together, maybe 20 to 30 pounds of seed per acre. Here you get things like the hemp hearts, uh, hemp seed oil, uh, also have protein powder, and hopefully in the future uh, animal feed. 
So what's happening in the sector right now? Uh, well, in order to get into it, you need to have a medium acreage to turn a profit. Probably, I would say, at a minimum of 50 to 100 acres because you're going to get less per acre. Uh, and uh, so you're going to want to grow enough of it that you're going to be able to uh, have a profit on it. Uh, right now, the largest supplier in this industry is Canada, uh, especially the province of Manitoba. Uh, there's a well-established market already available uh, in just about every supermarket where you can buy hauled hemp seeds and hemp seed protein powder and hemp seed oil. That's pretty much already been saturated. It might be hard to get more companies into that because there's already about three or four that I'm already seeing just about every supermarket in America. Uh, there's a huge potential for hemp seed as a food for both pets and livestock. And I want to stress this, this could be really big and will probably be a much, much larger industry uh, than hemp seed for human food. Uh, there are barriers right now to entry in the pet and livestock industry, but they are starting to fall. Uh, they're mostly legal barriers that require testing and people to on a jump through hoops to prove that it's safe uh, for the animal that you're going to give it to, especially if you're going to resell that animal uh, into the food market where people will eat it. Uh, these are started as uh, fall as more people are. Uh, putting out, uh, doing the tests and getting the regulation or, or getting the barriers uh, in place or getting the permits in place to begin to do this. Uh, the machinery for harvesting and processing are all commercially available. It's not difficult to do. And there also may even be a large industrial use for the seed oil, which has not yet been tapped. All right, the next sector is the hemp fiber sector. And very big, you're gonna plant this a lot more dense, usually at a minimum about 50 pounds per acre. Uh, but this one does have a lot of potential. You can get things like uh, twine, yarn, rope, webbing, building materials like hemp particle board. And overall, let's see what's happening here. Uh, in order to get into this, you are gonna to have to grow quite a bit. Uh, we figure about 500 to 1,000 acre minimum, really in order, to do, in order to do it really successfully as a commercial venture, uh, mainly because uh, you're gonna need some money to process all of it. Uh, the fiber industry has the greatest potential for all three of those industries. Uh, it will be, uh, much bigger than the grain industry and vastly bigger than the flower industry or CBD. There will be much, much, much more hemp acreage grown for fiber than anyone else. Uh, it does require greater infrastructure, though, in terms of both growing it and uh, processing equipment. And, of course, processing facilities uh, have to be put in place, and they need to be located close to where the hemp is being grown in order for this to be uh, efficient and work out well. We're generally recommending about 50 miles, or no farther than 50 miles. Uh, the selling price of fiber will depend upon the quality, with uh, better quality commanding a higher price, uh, but a lower volume, while lower quality, will fetch a lower price, but possibly have a larger volume that's able to get out there. So now, I've talked about the three different uh, sectors of the hemp industry, but within each one, you can put yourself in a lot of different places, a number of them. Uh, for example, you could be a grower, like a farmer, grow the hemp. You could be a processor, a manufacturer, a retailer, or possibly in a supporting industry, and I'll go into each one right now. Uh, so let's say you decided, hey, you want to be a hemp farmer. A lot of people are up for that. All right, so here's some of the questions you've got to be asking yourself if you want to get into this. One, is hemp legal to grow in your state or area? Okay, you certainly can't grow it if it's not legal. Uh, two, is your area suitable for growing hemp? And that is very important. Uh, if your area of the country has no history whatsoever of growing hemp and it doesn't grow corn or other similar crops, it's probably not going to work there. You know, you're not going to be growing hemp in the desert. It's got to be a regular farm crop. As a general rule, uh, if you can grow corn or cotton, you can probably get away with uh, hemp will probably grow there. 
Uh, you also then have to decide what you're going to do. There's really none of this tri crop uh, stuff. You've got to decide what you want to grow it for. If you're growing for flour, you got to grow for flour. If you're growing for grain, you got to grow for grain. If you're growing for fiber, you got to grow for fiber. Now, uh, all of these uh, will have kind of a leftover component to them. Uh, if you grow for grain or flour, you will have leftover stalks. It might make uh, you get some fiber and some herd out of it, but it's going to be a poor quality. Uh, when you grow for the fiber, of course, you will have uh, the herd uh, as a uh, byproduct of it. So if you're going to grow it, you've got to get the right genetics. You know, you're growing for CBD and it's only producing 3% CBD. That's not really good, and you're not going to be able to compete with the guy who has the you know, 15 or 20% CBD flower. So you've got to get the right genetics, whether it's uh, CBD, uh, seeds, grain, or for fiber. Do you have the knowledge and experience to grow hemp? You know, you've ever done it before. You know, if you've farmed other things and never farmed hemp, that doesn't mean you're good at it. If you have grown hemp, you know, in your closet and are a marijuana smoker, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a lot of knowledge and experience how to grow hemp. Uh, the best thing to do is actually try to find people who have grown it already who can show you what to do. And also, do you have the proper equipment to plant, water, test, harvest, dry, and support the crop? can't do it if you don't have the right tools. Uh, and lastly, do you have a buyer? And that's really important. You've got to make sure somebody's there to take it from you uh, when you're finished. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, each one of those in more detail. So is it legal to grow in your state or area? So has your state or tribe legalized industrial hemp? Uh, do you need to get any permits or registrations? Is your local law enforcement aware of the laws? It's very important. You want to kind of let them know what's going on so you don't get some surprise raid. Uh, are you zoned for farming? You, know, you don't want to try to grow hemp as, a, as an agricultural crop in a residential area. You know, so you need to know that you're in the right zoning area, zoning area. Is there a minimum or maximum amount you can grow? And that may depend upon either the your limitation on the land that you have or possibly the laws of, your, of uh, the state that you're in. Are there THC limits for your crop? Uh, usually 0.3%. Will inspection or testing be required? That's usually a yes. Most uh, states that have legalized do require uh, inspections and testing. And then what happens to the crop if you test it hot? You know, will they allow you to salvage a CBD crop maybe for fiber? Or are they going to make you destroy it? And that could mean burning it or plowing it under. You know, so you've got to be aware of what might happen if you were to go hot. Uh, is your farm area suitable for growing hemp? Once again, very important. Do you have enough acreage to make it feasible? Is there a processor or buyer near to where you are growing? What sort of crops are normally growing in your area? If you can grow corn and or cotton, you can likely grow hemp. Freezing temperatures will kill hemp plants. Best results are being able to plant in April and harvest as late as October, depending on your type of crop. Fiber in late August, early September, flowers in September, October, and grain in October. Although autoflowering varieties usually flower in 90 days regardless of uh, the life cycle. Uh, prolonged temperatures above 100 degrees can weaken or kill plants. It's also the opposite. Any uh, temperatures below freezing are going to weaken and kill the plants. If you have a late winter freeze or an early fall uh, freeze, uh, that could destroy your crop. Hemp needs water to grow. Does your area get enough rain? You know, do you have irrigation? Uh, if you're working on standing water or flood irrigation, uh, that's going to kill uh, the, the plants. Uh, they don't like wet feet or wet roots. Uh, sandy soils are best. Drip irrigation and sprinklers work better than flood irrigation. And certainly you need the proper nutrients uh, to grow it. Uh, what will be your main crop? Fiber, flour, or grain? Uh, fiber comes from the bark of the plant and it's good for textiles, building materials, insulation, composites, paper, and plastics. Grain is used for food, such as hauled hemp seeds, hemp seed oil, and hemp protein powder. Grain will soon be used for animal feed in both domestic pets and livestock. Flour 
uh, are from the female plants and are currently the most common crop in the U.S. grown for specific cannabinoids such as CBD, CBG, and others. Sometimes sold as a whole ground of plant matter, biomass, or trimmed flour. If grown for flour or grain, you can easily get fiber as a secondary crop, but the quality and yields are going to be lower. Can you get the right genetics? You must get the proper genetic seeds for what you want to cultivate, flowers, grain, or fiber. Clones are more expensive, but uniform and less risky. Be wary of people who are promoting dual crop varieties. Focus on the main crop. There is no such thing as a tri-crop. Will the spring produce a female flower that tests less than 0.3% THC? Will the seeds be feminized if you are growing for flowers? Is your source reliable, and will they stand by your product if there is a problem? That's very important. We've heard of a lot of people who have bought uh, CBD seeds only to have them test uh, high in THC, and they've had to destroy them. Uh, do you have the knowledge and experience to grow hemp? Being a cannabis smoker or having grown a few plants at home does not make one an expert in growing hemp on a farm. Indoor cultivation is different from greenhouse cultivation. Is it different from an outdoor cultivation? Being an expert in cultivating other crops does not make one an expert in growing hemp. The best teacher is experience. Seek out others who have already successfully grown hemp. If you do not know anyone with experience growing hemp, can you find knowledgeable sources online? Do you have the right proper equipment to plant, water, harvest, dry, and store hemp? Hand planting would be inefficient above 20 acres. Do you have planters, seed drills, or grain drills? Can you irrigate your crop if rains don't come? Is there a lab who can test the plants for THC? Do you have the right types of harvesters for the job? Will you be able to dry the flowers? Do you have the ability to allow fiber hemp to rent? Can you store the products for at least a year? Do you have a buyer? Very important. Prices for grain fiber have been steady while prices for flour have been dropping over the past five years. Have a price worked out prior to doing any planting. The quality of the raw materials will affect the prices. Be sure quality conditions are spelled out. A contract is only as good as the people signing it. Buyers should have a business record and a history of buying hemp raw materials. Make sure your buyer has funds and is not waiting on investment of their own. Uh, you don't want to get into a contract with somebody who actually doesn't yet have the money and may not get it. All right, so now we get into the other sector. So you want to be a hemp processor. So here are the questions you should be asking. What are the, the, the different types of hemp processors? Are you located near where the hemp is grown? Will you have more than one source of raw materials? Are there any laws regulating your type of processing? Do you have the right equipment? Do you know your market? Will you have buyers? Uh, let's look at the first one, the different types of hemp processors. Flower processors, that can include drying, trimming, extraction, or purification. Grain and seed processors, that would also involve drying, hauling, pressing, and also purification. Stocks would include redding, drying, decortication, separating, reduction, and removing lignin. These are all the processors that you can do with the hemp fiber. So, first question, are you located near where the hemp is being grown? In most places, you know, uh, the closer the better. You can't have a processing plant if you're in the middle of where people aren't growing the hemp. Transportation costs can exceed the value of the commodity if it has to travel too far. The higher the value of the raw crop, the farther it can be from the processor. Flour can be shipped farther than grain, and grain can be shipped farther than raw stocks. 50 miles or closer from the farm is a good estimate. Is the farmer willing to bring you the raw materials, or would it be easier for you to pick up the raw materials yourself? Do you have more than one source of raw materials? If one farm runs out or has a bad season, is there another source of raw materials you, if you have increased demand? Quality and variety may differ from one farm to another. Got to be aware of that. Price may become an issue if you have to rely upon one source or need to ship raw materials from far away. And remember, you have more choices, you can usually get lower prices. 
Uh, are there any laws regulating your type of processing? Are there any laws which should prevent you from processing hemp in your location? And that can differ from state to state and county to county. And farmers legally ship hemp to your location. Uh, that's generally in regards to uh, flour. And you legally ship your products to other states. Same thing. Will the government allow you to accept plants if they are too high in THC? And uh, that's a little iffy. Uh, sometimes things can test high, yet they are allowed to be processed if they can remove the THC. Uh, but not always. Sometimes you will have to be thrown away. Uh, will your processing plant emit odors, chemicals, or particles which are illegal or cause neighbors to complain? Do labor laws, health and safety regulations, or taxes make it too expensive or uncompetitive to operate your facility? That's a question. Do you have the right equipment? Can hemp be used with your existing equipment? That's the easiest. You don't have to buy anything new and you just uh, customize it. Can your equipment be modified to meet different customer expectations? Can equipment be purchased or developed which will process hemp the way you want? Can your equipment be repaired and can you get some spare parts if it breaks it down? Is your equipment scalable if you need to expand quickly? It's actually a good question. If you're doing well, you're going to want to be able to expand upwards. Do you know your market and do you have buyers? The easiest scenario here is having a hemp substitute for an existing product which you are already providing. That is, you're selling a product and you can substitute it with hemp. You don't have to make uh, too many changes to your processing or what you're doing. Uh, do you know the size of your market? You know, will there be people that want you know, the hemp here? Can you provide the technical specifications when requested? And that's usually important, uh, especially uh, for all parts of health. You want to know uh, certificates of analysis, possibly physical characteristics of the product, or nutritional. And will your product be cost-effective or perform better than currently used materials? And usually, you want to get into this, the hemp will have to either be cheaper, better quality, or better value. Uh, in order for it to enter into the markets. All right, here's another one. You want to be a manufacturer. You're going to actually make a product. So what's the difference between a manufacturer and a pro uh, processor? Do you know your market and how will help make the product better? All right, so the difference between a processor and a manufacturer. A processor usually is an intermediate step between the raw materials and the finished product. Usually sells business to business. A manufacturer will usually create the finished product to sell to a wholesaler, retailer, or end user. A manufacturer may not be considered part of the hemp industry but can use hemp as a raw material. Do you know the market? Is this an industry you're familiar with? What is the size of the market? Is it growing or declining? What are the average prices normally paid for the products in this market? Once again, we'll have to be competitive here. What, is a trade, what trade shows and methods of marketing are usual for this industry? And the market may not have anything to do with hemp. And that is, you know, you can create a hemp product it really has nothing to do with hemp. Uh, for example, uh, we sell hemp webbing. And while the product is made from hemp, really, it's just webbing that we're selling. And that's actually the market that we're getting into uh, if we were to sell that. Uh, also, you know, when you're into the, like CBD, you're getting into either the pharmaceutical or maybe the nutraceutical industry. How will hemp make the product better? Well, there's a few ways. Will it make the product less expensive? Will it be a better quality? Is it some sort of original use where the hemp is uh, unique, like CBD? Is it uh, better for your health? Is it good for the environment or biodegradable? And does it satisfy regulations? Sometimes uh, there could be a law in place that it only be satisfied by using hemp. Uh, say for if you needed all renewable materials, hemp might be able to fill that niche just based upon the law. All right, so you want to be a retailer. That's how to step right before you're selling to the end user. So if you're going to be a retailer of hemp products, uh, do you want to have a physical store or sell online? 
do you want to focus on him specific uh, do you want to focus on a specific aspect of him and you get reliable suppliers how will you stand out from the crowd all right first question do you want to have a physical store or sell online so physical retail locations are kind of dying out as more people are shopping online Online can reach more people, but there is a lot more competition. Certain industries, such as restaurants and suppliers of large products, still need physical locations, so it may just be necessary that you have to have one. It may be hard to get credit card payments for online sales of hemp products. That's been an issue recently and probably won't be resolved until they legalize marijuana on the federal level. Uh, stores can offer human interactions to better explain the benefits of hemp. And if you already have a store or online presence, it's easier to add hemp products to your line. All right. Do you want to focus on a specific aspect of hemp? So more details to this question. There will be potentially thousands of products made from hemp. Nutraceuticals, supplements, food, apparel, building materials, arts and craft products, and a lot more. Uh, so you're going to have to pick one to focus on. Uh, the easiest approach is, is to retail hemp is a complementary product to what you're already selling. So if you're already out there selling things, you're just adding hemp products to it. A variety of hemp products will offer a larger potential market but specializing in one area and sharpen your focus and let you excel in your niche. And you get reliable suppliers, very important if you're doing retail. Does your supplier produce a good quality products? Does your supplier have a business history and good reputation? Does your supplier respond quickly to phone calls or emails? Does your supplier seem knowledgeable about their products? Can your supplier provide test results if requested? Does your supplier deliver on time? Very important. Does your supplier offer you satisfiable terms? And that would mean, you know, sometimes will give you maybe net 30 versus, say, paying when it's delivered or having to prepay. Uh, is it easy to reorder or are items continually on that order? You know, it doesn't work if they're just constantly sold out. Does your supplier stand by their products if a customer has a complaint and wants it to return it? Very important because uh, as a retailer, you're kind of in the middle. If a customer comes back and they have a product, you're really going to want your supplier to stand by you if there's some issue, especially if it might be health-related. Does your supplier have liability insurance? Kind of what I just got to. Uh, they should have liability insurance if something were to go wrong, especially for products that are uh, being ingested. All right, so if you're a retailer, how will you stand out from the crowd? A lot of competition out there. Uh, some common products such as CBD oil and tinctures have saturated the market already. You need to find ways to stand out from the crowd. One way, competitive pricing, local or tribal branding, celebrity branding, knowledgeable salespeople, a large selection in a niche market, unique items, beautiful and compelling displays, and social media marketing. Uh, those are some of the ways you can stand out from the crowd. Uh, the last part of this is, you know, you really like hemp, you're not sure how you want to get into it, but you want to be a part of it, but you're doing something else. So, Perhaps, say, you specialize in promoting trade shows, or you offer financial services, or you're in the insurance industry, or real estate, or you have rental property, or you do consulting, logistics, accounting, research, testing, website design, or search engine optimization. These are just some of the supporting industries that hemp and the hemp industry are going to have to use uh, as it grows and moves forward. So there is going to be opportunity in those areas if you're good at those sorts of things. And that concludes uh, my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope now that if you do get into the hemp industry, you'll be asking all the right questions.